bluffing Or maybe I'll just get out my head And focus on what I know's coming Yeah Cause I can't fall asleep at night Without seeing my dreams Delusion and reality I'm somewhere in between These voices in my head get loud And they keep telling me That I'm a fool for trusting in these wings Drinking themselves crazy tonight <laughs> Baby, I should call and say told you I'd be right Wondering how long it was before you realized The biggest mistake of your life And now you're paying the price Oh, is it confidence or confusion? Either way, I feel like I ain't never losing Your opinion of now, you know just what I'm choosing I gotta do this Cause I can't fall asleep at night Without seeing my dreams Delusion every year the K-Mac regular season as the Centerburg Trojans come into Mount Gilead looking to keep its conference hopes alive as they take on an Indian squad from Mount Gilead looking to pull off the upset. We got the action coming your way on your smartphone, TV, PC, tablet, any smart device you have with pregame coming your way next. Nobody else gets you closer to the action than our exclusive coverage. So give me a call, Brian Skaronsky, and let's make you a part of the game. Morrill County Hospital, along with Ohio Health, is the official sports medicine provider of Mount Gilead High School. Available 24-7 to care for your athlete, with same-day appointment options available. They keep your athletes healthy and in the game. Morrill County Hospital and Ohio Health are proud to partner with Mount Gilead High School to provide a healthier community. Serving teams, parents, and all of Morrow County. Join me, Travis Big League Berardi, every other Wednesday for my Country Roads rankings, the top five girls and boys small school basketball squads right here in the area. Exclusively on The Joe Show. They told me this wouldn't be nothing Maybe I should take that advice Go get a life or maybe get a job or something We 
we welcome you inside the Morrow County Job and Family Services pregame show for this KMAX Saturday night contest between Centerburg and Mount Gilead. Hello, everybody. My name is Travis Berardi alongside the Hall of Fame coach Joe Baylog. And, Coach, this is a big game for Centerburg to right the ship. Last two games they played, losses in the Freddie Bird game and a tough loss to Northport where they had a lead in the first half. Kind of blew it, lost that. Now they're two games back in the conference. Still have a bit of a chance with four games left, but this is a big one tonight for them. Yeah, I mean, if they're going to stay in the in the, in the K-Mac race, they're going to uh, – this this has got to be a win that you have to take care of because um, they're right in the middle. Plus, what you're trying to do, I mean, Travis, it's kind of hard to believe that, you know, we're a month away from the end of the regular season. Right. And we'll be getting tournament play soon after that. So – if you're a team like Centerburg, you want to try to build your resume a little bit here before the draw in a couple of weeks. But then also you want to try to be playing your best basketball as you come down the stretch of the season. Let's get into our pregame show and first show you the team spotlight for those Centerburg Trojans under head coach John Mar Hepka. They are seven and six overall, five and three in the conference. You see those they lost. Fredericktown lost to Northmore, did bounce back and get a win over Danville to keep the door open, but they're going to have to continue to do that, losing two of their last three. Offensively, 53.2 points per game, giving up 52, though. And like I said, they're two games behind the Golden Knights. They played both games against Northmore, too, so they're going to need help to get back into the conference consideration. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna need help. Uh, and, and what you, you know, anytime you go on the road, especially in a league game, it's a little bit different. Um, so they're coming coming in against a team in, in Mount Gilead that's you know really struggled here the past three to four weeks, and it's going to be important that if you're Centerburg, you would like to get off to a great start uh, to not give Mount Gilead any kind of confidence tonight. Let's take a look at it. Assistant coach Bo Glenn and company. One of the players that Centerburg's happy to have back after a, a tough two-game break. This one. Trayvon Harris missed the last two games. We won't get into what, why, but he's the leading scorer on the team. 11.3 points, .7 blocks per game. He can play it defensively, he can play it offensively, and the Trojans tonight are going to need a good bounce back game from him. This is the second game back since missing the North Moore game, the Fredericktown game. Yep, I mean, it, 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 you, you take a look, you just mentioned those are two games they lost. Um, so he plays a big part in their success. Um, so having him back and kind of getting him back going again is going to be important tonight um, for the center, for Centerburg uh, in this basketball game. Now let's take a look at the team spotlight for the Mount Gilead Indians under head coach Nathan Davis, 3-10, and 1-7. and seven. Uh, They've lost eight straight, a tough one last night, losing at home to East Knox as well. Um, 46.2 points per game. They've given up 60, though. The defense has to come around, play a little bit better if they want to even have a chance tonight at yeah. getting the, not the upset. Yeah, they're gonna have, they're gonna have to really defend defend well um, against Centerburg. But uh, you look at their shooting percentages. They're gonna have to shoot the ball a lot better than than their percentages have shown for the season so far. Let's send it down to the floor for the playing of our national anthem by the pep band of... Actually, we're going to have a cheerleader singing it, so we'll send it down to the floor.
what a job there by one of the Mount Gilead Lady Indian cheerleaders. Joe, do you have a voice? Can you sing the national anthem for us? <laughs> you don't You don't want to hear me sing at all. <laughs> the only time I sing is maybe in the shower, and that's not very good. So. Hey. <laughs> the wife must love that. No, uh, she, she's, usually, she's usually far away that she can't hear it. So. <laughs> Let's get back into the pregame show and take a look at the player spotlight for the Indians of Mount Gilead High School. And it's the big man, Mitchell Sayers. Third on the team in scoring seven points, four rebounds and over a block per game. And he's that presence inside that could really open up an outside presence as we'll see in the keys to victory. But uh, when you have a big guy underneath, that's you, you gotta ha have him get going early on to open things up. Yeah, I mean, the one thing you, you can't coach is size. And uh, Mitchell Sayers has good size inside, so if they can exploit him a little bit inside, especially early, and, and make Centerberg have to adjust to him playing inside, that would be a real benefit for them offensively. Now let's take a look at the keys to victory for both squads tonight. First for the Trojans, multiple threats. The last few games I've seen them, I've seen one player show out. We saw Harris the first game. I saw him against Northmore. Harris blew up in the first half. Northmore face guarded him second half. He didn't do anything, nobody else helped out. The second game a week ago, on, actually well, on Saturday, one week ago, it was Suli that really did good in the first half, but again, nobody else. If they can get multiple players out there to score, especially with Grayson Reynolds out due to injury, they'll be fine. And yep. also a paint presence going against Sayers of Mount Gilead. If they can contain him, they'll be fine. Yeah, I mean, Suli and uh, Harris both are averaging double figures, and you said, Grayson Reynolds is out tonight. He's their third double-digit scorer, so it'll be interesting to see how they make that adjustment. Um, and yeah, I mean, as we mentioned earlier, with the size inside uh, that Mount Gilead has, um, you know, if they can limit that, his presence inside, that, that'll be a big, a big factor for them defensively. And the keys to victory for the Indians, the big man, Mitchell Sayers. Like I said, you get him established early on, it will open up the second key, your inside-out game. They can hit some open threes. If you get Sayers going on, have them collapse down on him, kick it out, get your open look. Yeah, I mean, anytime you can use a post guy, especially if he can catch it inside and doesn't necessarily have to score, um, but if he has the ability that he can pass and, and find open players on the perimeter, that's a big benefit to your basketball team. as the starting lineups getting announced here by both sides. Just about ready to go. Now I know coach, you, you really, you, you've been in most conference races as a coach, but very rare were you guys out at this point in the season. But when you were, how much did you say, uh, get your team play spoiler role, the spoiler role well, in this part? I mean, the thing that you want to have your kids do is you want to have them compete every night, every night that they play. And so, you know, if you're you're struggling as a basketball team, you're looking at trying to get some big victories late in the season. Um, and this would be a tremendous win for Mount Gilead to to knock off a team that's that's still in the hunt for that conference race and give your kids some, kids some confidence as they come down the stretch run of the season. This has been the Morrow County Job and Family Services pregame show as we are underway here on a Saturday night. You got all the stats? Uh, yeah, okay. And right off the bat, we're going to get a foul and free throws. As Trayvon Harris immediately. You know, really, really aggressive going to the basket, basket right off the start. I mean, six seconds into the game, he's able to get to the free throw line. And and when you're a, when you're a scorer, if you get to the free throw line and make free throws, which he makes his first here, see the ball go through the basket. That's usually a good sign uh, for your basketball team. He gets both, and the Trojans just like that ahead one nothing. First possession for the Indians. Jake Wilt, 
now into the lineup, replacing Rowan Fitzpatrick. Will be the guard to start things off. Right side to Hayden Summerlot. You know, Mount Gilly, Mount Gilly going with the four out, one in look. Um, with Gage Baker, in, the guy inside that really trying to look to post him up. Into the lane, rejected out of bounds. Who else? Trevin Harris right there to keep that bucket from falling. Well, he's going to take the ball out of bounds there in a box set. Just a simple cross screen action, and Centerberg does a really good job making him throw the ball out. The last option to reset things up. Wilt. Left side over to Carson Trainer. He's going to take it in, put it up, in and out, no good. Sue Lee with the rebound. Back really nice the way. pass. Great pass inside. And a bucket by Ryder Scott. It's 4 0. He's Sully with a really nice push and transition and able to find his teammate inside for an easy layup. To take a look at the Ohio Means Jobs Morrow County replay. Again, baseline out of bounds here for Mount Gilead. Looks like they're in a box set again to see if they do anything different. Up, they step down, look like they're going to try to run a shooter off a screen on the backside, but didn't get the ball reversed very quickly. Ball deflected out and a turnover, the first against Mount Gilead tonight. As you see, that's just a unforced error there. Kind of like a wide receiver, he looked towards the bucket before he even caught it. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you're Mount Gilead, you're really going to have to limit your turnovers tonight. Bennett Hill gets it off, right side. Harris tried to pass it to a cutter and uh, turned it over. Both teams now with the turnover in the first couple of minutes. Deep three, wow. Hayden Summerlot yep. hit that from North Bloomfield Township. It's 4-3. Yep, he, uh, he had his hands and feet ready and had a lot of confidence in shooting that shot, so that's a good start for him. Suli rejected, gets it back, puts it up and in. Centerberg answers, Suli with four points. I mean, you can see offensively a little bit what Centerberg tries to do. They try to post Suli and Harris up quite a bit. And now another turnover, and here comes a transition opportunity. Deflected out of bounds. It'll stay with Centerberg as we take a look at the deep, well, actually the, the answer first by Sue Lee. Like I mentioned, 23 points in the first half against the Golden Knights. So baseline out of bounds here at a little one four low set. And they look to post. And I believe that's a three second yeah. violation. They posted Ryder Scott up inside on it. And he probably really should have looked to score, but uh, they get a three-second call. So Mount Gilead facing some full-court pressure, easily broken, though. Will into the lane, and he's going to get bailed out with a foul call because he shot that from over top of his head. Yeah, it's going to go against Harris. Harris, yeah. And you can see that to start the game, Centerberg's defensively trying to impose their will a little bit by picking up the ball full court. Uh, and Mount Gilead does a good job there of breaking the pressure, attacking the basket, and able to get to the free throw line. So Wilt with the first free throw, cuts this back down to a two-point game, just about three minutes in. And Wilt knocks them both down. A coach's dream, 100% from the free throw line. So Mount Gilead in man-to-man, -man, just kind of showing some token full-court pressure to slow, slow Centerberg down a little bit. Spin move, nope. Yep. Travel. Harris just trying to go a little too fast right there. So the third turnover yep. on Centerberg. And then uh, Mal Gilly turns it right back over. How many?
many times have we seen that this year, Coach, where one team will get a turnover but immediately <laughs> give it back? Yeah. It's, had to, it's got to be up towards 30. Well, you can see that the Centerburg game plan is they're going to really try to pressure Montgilly in the full court and see if they can create offense with their defense. Left side, that's Bennett Hill. Got a rejection inside, balls on the ground, and a turnover. Three again, this time left short, and in transition. Layup, yeah, this, easily made. Th this is what you cannot give up. And so when you, if you don't make that quick three, um, you got to make sure you get back defensively. And right now, Mount Gilead has not done that on a couple of, couple of possessions here. And again, a turn turnover, turnover. Yep. Euro step, it's, and I we're going to get a walk. Yeah, you're going to get a travel. And yep. we'll get a Mount Gilead timeout as well. It's, that's just going about 90 miles an hour with a Euro step. Usually not going to be a good thing. Yeah, um, just, just took an extra hop there. Um, but you can see, you know, Mount Gilly is not, right now, is not afraid to try to attack this center bird full court pressure. So the key is you're going to have to make shots out of it and finish shots at the basket or center bird's going to come right back at you uh, and pushing the basketball. But, but right now, for both basketball teams, I think coaches are going to be addressing turnover situation. Um, both, both teams have turned it over three or four times here in the first four minutes of the game and um, not really something that you want your team doing right now. Especially this late in the season, too. It's yeah. not like these teams both have faced some big games, some stiff competition before, and I know it probably aggravates you as a coach to see well, them making some early season mistakes. And, and usually if teams pressure, their, their press is going to be a lot better in the, in the first half of the season rather than the second half because you, you just mentioned Travis. Uh, you hope your team's going to be a lot better handling that pressure. Suley's three off the mark, no good. First rebound of the night for Mount Gilead. They trail 8-5. In the lane, kicked right side. Summerlot for another three, short. Offensive board by Gage Baker, and he's going to be fouled with a putback. Might be on Suley. That is, that'll be his second. And it is. Yep. So Gage Baker will go to the line for two free throws. Misses the first. Well, we have a second. Want to welcome everybody watching live and free this evening. Let us know where you're watching from. Give us a shout out. We'll shout you right back out. Already getting comments in, so next time we get a stop. Well, Lawrence and we'll Ball check that. into the game for Sutterberg. And again, Mount Gilead just kind of showing token full court pressure. Um, not, not really trying to turn the ball, get them to turn the ball over. Just trying to make sure that, that Sutterberg cannot get out and get up the floor quickly in transition. Deep three on the other end. Almost went through, but rattled out and a rebound to Mount Gilead. You know, the, the thing Mount Gilead's doing right now, though, defensively, is they are doing a good job of limiting Centerberg to one shot. They've done a great job of boxing out um, and allowing the Indians only one, one shot at the rim. Jake Wilt ties things up here at the three-minute mark. We're tied at eight. And right now, Centerberg, Suley, and Harris are both on the bench. Um, so that's, that limits their scoring a little bit. And we'll get a foul as we take a look at that take to the hole brought to you by Ohio Means Jobs, Morrow County. I mean, Wilt only a sophomore, uh, and that's that's a really quick, aggressive drive to the basket and able to finish. So that, that's a good sign of the future for the Mount Gilead Indians. Inbounds to Bennett Hill, works it around. Into the lane, Euro step up, no good, but an offensive board. Yeah, there's, there's an offensive board. Put back won't go, and this time Mount Gilead will yep, come out with it, foul. and then we'll get a foul. Yeah, they're going to go to the free throw line. That's going to be the fifth foul on Centerberg. So it's 
Suley and Harris are going to come back in. So interesting, as we mentioned, Suley's got two fouls. And coming back in at the 225 mark of the first quarter. So there's a 21 on the JV roster, not on the varsity roster. So I'm guessing that's Thomas Schaller. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what I would assume too. With two fouls. He started tonight. First free throw good, and Mount Gilead has its first lead of the night. Gage Baker back to the line, hits the first. And if you're gonna if you're gonna upset a team, one of the ways to do it is, especially with the new free throw shooting rule, is to get to that free throw line. And so they're they're shooting two free throws the rest of this quarter. So I'm assuming that they're gonna try to really be aggressive going to the basket. And especially with the two leading scores, well, they were on the bench, now they're back in yeah. here, but they're able to take advantage of that to get the lead. Harris. Looking to cross over. Good defense by Vickers, but then yep. at the end we get a bump. Yeah. Well, the block. It kind of kind of a tough call because he was defensively, he was he was doing a good job defending Harris. Saw at the tail end of it, he kind of put his hand on his back. I think that might have been why they called it. Three from the corner, short, rebound Mount Gilead. Left side to Summerlight. Now the trainer, skip pass. Into the lane, ball fake, puts it up, and it goes. Gage Baker. Gage Baker's got the last four points for the Indians, and they're up 12-8 as we approach the 130 mark here of the first quarter. Now that now they're playing, it looks like a kind of a interesting zone here it's like a 2-1-2 2-1-2 two, two. Two, two. with the big man in the with middle the, with the big man taking up a lot of space uh at the free throw line area then dropping in so interesting to see how centerberg attacks this mitchell sayers our player spotlight player right now guarding trevin harris so sayers is just is just kind of playing a triangle playing a triangle from the the uh, free throw line to the block. And he gets a block, jump ball, change of possession, and that is what Mount Gilead needs from this player tonight. Well, and we talked about the size factor um, inside of Sayers, and right there that was a factor because Harris tried to go up over top and he just got his, you know, his body and his, his hands up and was able to force the jump ball. Under a minute to play here. Uh, but these are the, I mean, these turnovers hurt just because you lose possessions. I mean, the and unforced the, the, too. The, the, the good thing is it's not a live ball turnover, so that is you true. know, Center, Centerberg's not going back, but it's bad, you know, but not as bad. Yeah, any turnover is bad. 12-8, Mount Gilead leading here in the first. Hill deflected out. Nice hands there by Trainer because that was going to be in Harris's favorite spot to really not quite post up, but get a shot inside. So out of bounds, a, a stack set here, and I would anticipate you might look for Sayer, or excuse me, for uh, Harris diving, which he does, but they don't find him. And a foul, though. Yep. That'll be the fourth against Mount Gilead here in the first quarter. So side out of bounds now. That's the second on Carson Trainer. So Trainer and Vickers both with two fouls for Mount Gilead. As Cole Fricky checks in. So 35 seconds to go in the quarter. We'll see if Centerberg holds here for the last shot of the quarter or not. Because um, not only we get the last shot of the quarter here, but they also would get the ball to start the second quarter so that they can have two possessions here. It looks like they're going to hold here with 15 seconds. Suli, top of the key, backs it out with 10. Now the hill back to Suli with five. He over turned the it over. Ball and he turns it over. Oh. Another unforced error, the sixth turnover against Centerberg here in the first quarter, and with 4.3, a chance to at least get it across half court and get a decent look at the bucket if they can get forward. Oh, moving. he walked. Two, he walked one, at it. the buzzer, over the hoop, no good, and that is how quarter one will end. Mount Gilead 
strong defensive first quarter. They lead Centerburg 12-8. County Hospital, along with Ohio Health, is the official sports medicine provider of Mount Gilead High School. Available 24-7 to care for your athlete, with same-day appointment options available. They keep your athletes healthy and in the game. Morrill County Hospital and Ohio Health are proud to partner with Mount Gilead High School to provide a healthier community. Serving teams, parents, and all of Morrill County. Back here at Mount Gilead, Indians leading 12-8 after one over Centerburg. Travis Berardi back here with Joe Baylog and uh, kind of a sloppy first quarter. 11 combined turnovers, yep. six Centerburg, five Mount Gilead. Yep, I mean, that's 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 an issue for both teams is they got to do a better job of taking care of the basketball. So now Mount Gilead comes out in a, uh, looks like a 1-3-1 one -one zone uh, with Sayers covering a lot of space in the middle of the floor there. So they, they're changing defenses here a little bit. Mid-range jumper no good. Sayers got a hand on it for a second. But yeah. I believe he's bailed out by Centerberg trying to go yeah. with the attempt. I mean, Jack Lawrence there trying to dive for the rebound. and You like the hustle. A, you, yeah, you got to you gotta like that. So again, Centerberg showing pressure full court man to man. And that's going to be a... Kick. Ooh, no, didn't call it a kick. I guess he didn't think it was intentional. Harris misses the bunny. Offensive board reverse won't go. Mm -hmm. And out comes Center or Mount Gilead. They can't get it. <laughs> There's the big man with the board. Open three. No. Oh. Layup no again. And now there's a lid on the hoop for both sides. And you can see both teams not, not afraid to try to push the basketball in transition. Into the lane, pull up, no. That, that's a tough shot. Sayers, though, with yep. one hand, but he was on the line. Yep. Out of bounds. Coach Davis pleading with the refs that the big man was getting shoved out of bounds, but... And they come back, and they're in that 1-3-1 with, with Sayers in, in the middle. Baker's along the baseline. Key thing here is gets a 1-3-1. You want to try to get the ball to the baseline somewhere to see, see how that defense adjusts. D3. D3, yeah. Boarded by Mount Gilead, and we'll get a foul against Ryder Scott. But if you're Mount Gilead, that's a shot you want them taking. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a D3. Um, you know, not a shot that a lot of a lot of players can make. Uh, so the the change of defenses here that Mount Gilead has shown, of playing man, a little bit of a different look, a two-one-two, and then the one-three-one. Uh, and, and Sayers, we we said he has just his presence in the in the defensive in the in the lane defensively has caused some problems. Uh, let's look at this replay, Coach. Sayers tried to take it in, but I think. Yeah, I think that's a that's a pretty good block there. Um, but Sayers gets to go to the free throw line to shoot two, and this is this is where Mount Gillies had success also, is getting to the free throw line here early in this basketball game. Drains the first. I mean, right now, if you're Centerberg, you're a little bit concerned because you've been in the scoring drought here for probably the last three or four minutes on the clock. Baker with a nice effort to get to the offensive glass and, and gets a second possession. Mount Gilead six of eight from the line to start. Yep, that's the 75%. They think they can, they come into this game shooting like 56% from the free throw line. That'll be a turnover. He stepped on the line. 
But again, you know, we, we talk about turnovers. You don't like turnovers, but you can see the difference when they live ball turnover. Centerberg's really aggressive being able to go to the basket. If it's a dead ball turnover, they're able to get back and get set in this 1-3-1 defense right now. Ball nearly stolen away. Suli saves it. Into the lane, triple teamed. He's going to get uh. fouled, and we'll get two free throws. You take a look at the replay here. It's going to go against Mitchell Sayers, his first. In and out. Suli yet to break into the scoring column tonight. Yeah, and he's going to have to score for them to, to be successful. Him and, him and Harris both uh, are going to need to score. Harris has four. Suli, again, misses the second free throw. But they do get the offensive board. Yep. Now it looks like, like Mount Gilly is man-to-man. -man. So you have Harris matched up with uh, Sayers. Let's, let's see what they do here if they try to isolate Harris on the perimeter a little bit. Take a look at the replay. Uh, uh, the hand, the yeah, only thing I, I'd I say was the hand on the back. Yeah, he, he had both hands on him, and I think anytime you yep. put both hands on, a, on an offensive player, they're going to make that call. But Coach Davis not not real happy with that call. Summer lots first. Both teams with two so. fouls here at the 5.30 mark. Harris in the corner. Looks to drive, but there's the big man there waiting for him. Left side three. Still won't go. Rebound Mount Gilead. I mean, Hills. That was a good look. Hills, Hills been looking to get that shot, just has not been able to make it. I think he's 0 for 3 from three-point range. Wilt into the lane. Spins. And he gets bumped. And another foul. This one against Centerberg. Not really sure. That's on Lawrence, his he first. He didn't really put his hands on him, and he was just kind of straight up. But box set again here out of bounds. Let's see what they do. They step Sayers out. Looks like they want to try to get the ball reversed to the shooter on the backside, which is what they do. Deep three won't go, but an offensive board put back. Counted and one. Mount Gillian, what a start for them. Baker, he's got seven points and a chance to get it to eight. Yeah, Baker's been, been real effective. I mean, to start the game when you saw that Sayer was, was on the bench, they really tried to look to, to post uh, Baker up inside. Um, him being active on the offensive glass has been a difference right here in the second quarter. Third foul against Ryder Scott. He's going to have to take a seat probably for the rest of the quarter. Free throw, no good. Knocked out and saved to Centerberg. 15-8. Indians Man, that, lead here. This this zone defense is caused is is, is causing uh, Centerberg a lot of problems. They have just not done a very good job of of attacking it at all. Um, and another turnover here uh, by and Centerberg. Will Falling to the ground was able to deflect it off at of Centerberg and cause their seventh turnover. I mean, Summerlot and Will, they, as, as two guards, they, they show some pretty good quickness here with the basketball in their hands. Then a Baker out on the perimeter. They're looking to Sayer inside. Saved by Summerlot. Right side to Fricky. Now to Wilt into the lane. Floats. No. Somehow bounce right back at the hoop. Still in the air, we're playing volleyball. On the ground, both teams fighting. We're gonna get a foul on Mount Gilead. A little too much grabbing here. Yeah. That'll be the first foul against Gage Baker. Yeah, you can't, can't really jump right on the pile, which is what they did. Um. But that was just that's more slap, trying to slap the ball out instead of going up strong to yeah. grab it. Yeah. You see that a lot nowadays, too, in basketball, where they're just just a little flick instead of you get two hands on it. Yeah. Not only are you going to probably get the rebound, but you might get fouled as well. Yeah. You, you know, any anybody that can get rebound. I mean, you talk a lot as a coach about rebounding the ball with two hands. Another three. This time it's short. 
Rebound Mount Gilead and the cold streak continues. Yep. Ben for Hill Centerbird. Just not able to just not able to make that shot. I mean, they are in a, a, a scoring drought here. They have not scored here in the second quarter. And we're under the four minute mark and probably didn't score to, for the last two minutes of the first quarter. So they're on almost a six minute drought here on the clock. Sayers kicks it back around. Ball fake by Fricky. Closely guarded. Gets it to Wilt. 3.33 left in the half, 15-8 Mount Gilead. Defense and turnovers have been the name of this game so far. Baker Spin with a little move. jump stop inside, the jump hook, but not able to ache it. Two Trojans yeah. collide. He goes back yeah. up, and he'll get free throws. Everything is turning up Mount Gilead so and far, Suley, Coach. Suley's going to have his third foul here. Yeah, they just... Uh, you know, they, they get the defensive rebound, but kind of bump into each other, fall on the floor, and Mount Gilead finds a way. Baker finds a way to pick it up and uh, get to the free throw line here. So he's been really good at the free throw line here early in the basketball game. Your coach, Marhefka, do you get a timeout here? Try to settle the troops? Well, or do you let it play on? You know, he's, he hasn't used, I don't think he's used a timeout yet. Um, we only had one. That was Mount Gilead early in the yeah. first quarter. I mean, I'm sure here if, if something doesn't happen here in about the next possession, he might use it. But they just got to find a way. Uh, They're getting open looks from yeah, three, especially. I mean, just Hill's had hit. some open looks. And right now, Mount Gilead's just going to stay in this zone and, and see if, you know, force them to make some shots. Back door, kick right side, three in the air. Finally, Centerberg hits its first bucket of the quarter. Schaller for three. Yeah, that's that's a big that's a big bucket because now you, you can maybe you know force some gaps in that zone a little bit. But here here's another situation is this is the the fifth foul uh, on Centerberg and Mount Gilly's going to the line again for two free throws here in the last three minutes of the half. Schaller, Suli, Scott, all three fouls. Yep. Two free throws the rest of the way for Mount Gilead in this half. This and misses the first. You need to take advantage of this right now. Absolutely. Yep. Wow. Sayers are going to get called for a foul here. We do have a, a, a roster update. 21 is Owen Taylor. Owen Taylor. Thank you, Garrett Belcher. Now we have a number number 30 in the game, but I don't see that, that on the roster. That is Jaden Joyner also. Okay. Thank you, Garrett, for that. We appreciate you folks helping us out. I mean, both both of those guys are freshmen and, and played played significant minutes in the JV game. Coach Marhefka possibly, you know, trying to get a spark from anywhere that he can. Well, when you're in foul trouble like this, you, you got to go, you got to find some guys. So trying to find, let these two freshmen see if they can give them a little bit of spark. That shot uh, airballed. Back comes Centerberg, but a bobble by the freshman. Yeah. And another turnover. Number nine against Centerberg here tonight. Update from East Knox. Northmore 29, East Knox 16 with a minute left in the first quarter. The Golden Knights. Looking to get a game closer from their, I believe, fourth conference championship in school yeah. history. 29 points in a first quarter has got to be a good first sign half. for them. Third, they're uh, in the first okay, half. Okay, when yeah. you said first quarter, I was like, That's man. That's my bad. That, that, that was just, so, so a good start for the Knights there, you know, trying to just, uh, you know, maintain that lead here in the KMAC. I'll run my lap later for, doing, for screwing <laughs> that one up, Coach. Wilt from the corner, tough shot off the back iron. Good box no, out. Great box out there by Jack Lawrence. Yeah, that was that was huge. I mean, the size of Sayers. And good for Sayers, not trying to go over the top. Just could have drawn a foul. That would be number three on him, and that might change the complexion yeah. of this game. 
We'll get a jump ball here and another change of possession turnover. Yeah. I mean, Harris just kind of struggling when he put the ball on the floor tonight. It's like one of those nights that you're just going to kind of continue to have to fight through it here. Well, when you got 6'6", 260 facing you, I'd yeah. slow down and try and stop yeah. the breaks too. But, but right now, the, the, the thing being is Mount Gilly has not had a lot of live ball turnovers. So and Center, Centerberg's not been able to force the pace of the game that maybe they would want. Yeah, that transition is their game with their athleticism and speed, kind of like the yeah. girls do as well. But like you said, when you allow a team, especially with a big guy in the middle, to get set up defensively, it's hard. And when that you're not hitting threes. There by, the, by the freshman joiner. Make sure to stay tuned at the break. We'll do a split screen during our commercials. The mini Indian cheerleaders will be out here. Then after that, we have a special presentation, the state runner-up unveiling ceremony, the banner ceremony for the cross-country team. All that coming up at the break as well as stats and analysis here in about 35 seconds of game time. Wilt working his way around, finds Summerlot into the corner for Fricky. <coughs> well, so we're at 30 seconds, so it looks like well, it was looks looking like, a like turnover. <laughs> was looking like Mount Gilly was going to try to hold the ball uh, for the last shot of the quarter, but uh, they turn it over. Uh, That's their seventh. So with 29 seconds, Centerberg has the basketball. Let's see if the Indians hold it for the last shot of the half, or if they look to attack here. After all that, though, they're only trailing by six with a yeah. chance to make this one possession at the break. Uh, I mean, they 11 it, it, points in the first half, though. Something that. And that's the thing probably we'll Coach, Coach Mark Hefka is going to talk about at the half is, you know, we haven't played very well, but we're really not out of the basketball game at all. It's a 5-3 quarter. <laughs> Harris, great job drawing the foul there. He will go to the line with a chance to cut this back to a, And that's at one, least four. Of, one of the few times here in the first half that Centerberg's been able to put the ball inside versus this zone. Um, and I think that's going to probably be a little bit of a, more of an emphasis as they come out in the second half, is to find a way they can get some cutters to go to the basket. But right now, what's also hurting Centerberg is their inability to make free throws. And Two I think five. I think they come in the game shooting only 50%, 56% from the free throw line also. Misses yep. them both. Yep. Suley missed two of them. Harris has missed two now. Shot at the buzzer, no good. And that will take us to the half. Mount Gilead with an impressive defensive display here. They lead this low scoring affair 17 to 11. Stay tuned. Like I said, a lot of halftime festivities coming up here live and free. Hi, I'm Joe Baylog, and you're not. Hall of Fame coach turned future Hall of Fame host. Now he's on TV hosting his own. Highlighting our team in the Joe Shield Zone. Hall of Fame coach, now a host. Sharing our stories from coast to coast. From the court to the screen, he's the best. Jules like to see Liz on in the Joe Shield Quest. Because this is my show. And it's an all new me in the new year. Deal with it. Guarantee nobody else gets you closer to the action than our exclusive coverage. So give me a call, Brian Skaronsky, and let's make you a part of the game. Morrill County Hospital, along with Ohio Health, is the official sports medicine provider of Mount Gilead High School. Available 24-7 to care for your athlete, with same-day appointment options available. They keep your athletes healthy and in the game. Morrill County Hospital and Ohio Health are proud to partner with Mount Gilead High School 
to provide a healthier community. Serving teams, parents, and all of Morrill County. Join me, Travis Big League Berardi, every other Wednesday for my Country Roads rankings, the top five girls and boys small school basketball squads right here in the area. Exclusively on The Joe Show. Our boys had moved into second place, only 40 points from the lead. 
and at the finish line we remain in second place. Cutting the lead of Columbus Grove to a mere six points, one of the smallest margins in state history. Welcome you inside the Morrow County Job and Family Services Halftime Show, where you just witnessed the many Indian cheerleaders as well as the boys cross country squad recognized for their 2023 State Runners Up banner in cross country. Congratulations to them. Travis Brody back here with Joe Baylog, and we have 90 seconds before the third quarter, so let's get right into the stats, Joe. Uh, turnovers for Centerburg, low shooting, and missed free throws. That is why the Mount Gilead Indians have the lead right now. Uh, uh, you know, really not, I mean, you, you gotta kind of state it as it is, a, a kind of a sloppy half of basketball. Um, both teams uh, turning it over, but as we said, most of those turnovers were not live ball turnovers, so defenses were able to get set. The thing that Centerburg's got to figure out here in the second half is how are we going to attack this zone? Because they're playing a little bit of a 2-1-2 two, two with that middle guy yeah. all the way up at the free throw line. And that usually many times it's Sayers. And they've also had a 1-3-1 one, one, and they've just not been able to attack that zone at all. If you're Mount Gilead, you just got to do continue a better job of taking care of the basketball. I mean, that's, that's, that's the big key. And, um, 
I, I mean, right now you have Centerberg where you want. They're not making perimeter shots, and they're not able to get the basketball inside. So you're, I'm going to assume you're going to see that, that Mount Gilly is going to come out and play that same defense, that 2-1-2 two, two with the middle guy really high, and that 1-3-1 one, one because it's really worked well tonight so far. Individual scoring as we start the second quarter. First for Centerberg, four points by Harris and Scott each, three points by Owen Taylor, and that's it. Yep. As for Mount Gilly, at nine points from Gage Baker, Five of that coming from the free throw line. He's five of seven. Four from Jake Wilt, three from Summerlot, one from Sayers. Yep. Score by quarter. 12-8, Mount Gilead in the first, and then a 5-3 second quarter, Joe, making it 17-11 as we're back to action. Centerberg with the first possession, pinballs around, gets back out. Hill's going to try another three, and he's yeah. still yet to break into yeah. the scoring column from beyond the arc. I mean, he, he's... I mean, and really other than really one, he's had pretty wide open looks here. So if you're a shooter like Hill, you're going to, if you got open looks, you got to continue to take them because that's one of the, that's going to be one of the ways that's going to open up that zone a little bit. Shooter, shoot. Trainer. Gets it inside to Baker, kicks it back out to Wilt. First possession for Mount Gilead in the second half. I mean, one of the things you got to be aware of, Suley's got three fouls also. So Not only Suley, but Taylor and Scott as well. Yeah, you can't really afford to have those guys get that fourth foul here early in the second half. Will into the lane, puts it up. Ooh. Tough shot, no. Offensive board, wow. though. Baker. And he finishes. Baker having a really good night. First in the double figures with 11. Yep. And he just tied He just tied uh, Centerberg. <laughs> he did. You were right. 11-11 for that. T Taylor's 11, Centerberg 11 right now. Bizarre. But they're they're back to that 2-1-2 that two, two, uh, with the middle guy playing really high. Um, and Cam Vickers now is that guy in that high post. Another three attempt, yep. and this time it's hit. Owen Taylor. Owen Taylor. He's the one from beyond the arc, his second three. And just like that, it's back to a five point game. But you saw that they were able to put the ball in the high post, had a little bit of inside outside action there. Uh, so the ball movement helped to get that open three. Summerlot over the trainer will drive in, gets it stripped away. Uh, but they'll say it uh, last touched. Uh, yeah, Harris deflected it. So. So baseline out of bounds here again. Mount Gilead is shown mostly a box set. And it looks like they're going to try to run the, well, that time it looked like they were, they had run, they had run Summerlot off of the screen opposite. And it looked like they were going to try to bring Summerlot back off of the down screen, coming right back to the ball. But again, a turnover by Mount Gilead. Suley it's, did just enough to force that turnover. Yep. Mm -hmm. Legally, too. He didn't bump. He's with possession, kicks it back out to Taylor, who has two threes tonight. And to Scott, left side, another three attempt for Hill, and again, yeah, just not just able short. to make a shot. Good looks. We've been saying this all night, just hasn't been able to finish yet. On the other end, that's short, yeah. but a long offensive board. Yep. Cross court pass. Vickers for three. That's, that's way off, up. but he'll get his own board. Ball fake, uh -huh. puts it up and in. You know, that second, third chance opportunities are big, and especially in a low-scoring game, it's going to be big here. And he was so he, wide open that nobody guarded him or boxed him out, and he was able to run right back in after he realized that was off. Suli for three. Nope. I mean, Mount Gilly's going to stay in this zone until they, they start making shots consistently on the perimeter. Right now, uh, Centerberg just struggling to, to make a shot on the perimeter. And who else but Gage Baker yep. is going to go back to the line with another offensive board. That's yep. the fifth offensive rebound for Mount Gilead tonight, and I think he's had all but one. I mean, Baker's really been active active around the basket. I think he's he might be, what, like five or six from the line? Five of seven. Five of seven, so. Five of eight. Yep. There is the Joe Lo Daylog announcer jinx for the <laughs> night. It always happens to somebody every single game. But, but you know, the, the, the thing is, I think right now, Mount Gilead's winning the rebounding battle, and they're winning the battle of getting to the free throw line, and those are usually key factors. And here's an offensive rebound off of a missed free throw. Those hurt the most. Yep. Carson Trainer getting that rebound, but they turn it over. Live ball turnover. Let's see if uh, 
Centerberg, they attack here. Harris with penetration. Suli with three. the three in the corner. Big. His first points of the night. I mean, the big thing is when, you, when you're when you able to, to get a turnover or get a defensive rebound, the best way to beat a zone many times is just to beat the zone down the floor because it can't get set up. And in that case there, Harris, Harris was able to attack that zone and make that pass. So a 6-4 quarter so far on our home and kitchen supply timeout. Now we'll have a chance to go into our comments section. Haven't done that yet tonight, so hello, everybody. Bethany Smith rooting on the Trojans. Nicole Sayers rooting the Indians on. Megan Sargent, go Trojans. Sherry Stoyle, go Trojans. Laura Brown rooting on Wyatt Long, number 22. That is a Mount Gilead Indian. Daniel Stotts, as always. Hello, buddy. Thanks for watching tonight. Rooting on the Indians. He's a K-Mac fan. Update from East Knox High School. Northmore, they got this well in hand. They're leading it by 22, 40 to 18. Which, if you're top of the league, that's what you want to be able to do is take care of business. And Now, um, there's a situation, too. Well, first, we'll be there Monday for the Joe Show, yep. filming of that. But then they get Cardington on Wednesday, a game I'll be at live and free. If they win that one. Nice cut there. Great take. Great out-of-bounds play as Vickers is fouled. But if Northmore can beat Cardington, you and I will be on the call next Saturday against Danville for a chance to clinch a share of the K-Mac. I mean, Cam, they, they've showed that box set where they've stepped that guy out. Cam Vickers just takes a hard step like he's going out, went right back to the basket, and a nice pass to him inside. Jack Lawrence called for his second foul. Hits both. And also, Joe, every time Centerberg's finally been able to hit a shot, Mount Gilead's yep. been able to answer. Hill again, way short this one. He is, he is just struggling tonight. Into the lane, spin move, yep. and we'll get a foul. Yep, called a reach, out, reach foul on, on, on Vickers. Or excuse me, on Hill. I'm sorry. That'll be Hill's first. We can run the lap later, Joe. Hill, Hill, Hill's first, team third. So one of the things Mount Gilling's been able to do is they've been able to get into that bonus right away. And now this is a fourth foul. And I believe every quarter Mount Gilead's been yeah, able to take yeah. advantage of with, that too and get free with throws. About, with about just about three minutes to go in the quarter, and that could be huge. This is a two-shot foul for a guy that's been to the line a lot tonight. Second foul against Harris. And Gage Baker goes the line. Gets the first after starting the second half 0-2 from the line. He has 12, the lead all scores. Short. Suli himself oh. takes it to the hole. So, so you can see the strength of Centerberg is when they're able to get the ball in transition. And Mount Gilly's done a pretty good job tonight of, of limiting that. Uh, but they're off of a missed free throw. Suli able to go right to the basket and finish. He's got five in the second half. Maybe the bright spot to start things for Centerberg. But on the other end, oh, here he goes. Finish. Left nice side. Pass. Two transition baskets in a row here. Cut the lead to three, so the Indians are down by three and seem to be picking up a little bit of momentum. Baker, nice post move. He's Harris, Harris went for the steal, wasn't able to get it, and Baker just makes a little drop step, able to finish at the basket. Suley and Harris playing a two-man game. Harris unable to hit the three. Now Mount Gilead pushing it back. And a foul. Uh -oh. Going to the free throw line. Foul looked like it was on Taylor. They called it on Taylor. It is, it's his fourth. I think you're getting the comfortable enough that we may get you to call a game or two uh, down here, I don't here, know about Joe. that, but we'll you're see. You're on a roll tonight, man. Big free throws coming up here for Summerlot to kind of stop the bleeding as Senneberg's finally found an offensive identity. That puts it uh. back up to six. The foul, the foul trouble for Centerberg has been key tonight also. It's just 
Oh, absolutely. You know, you, it messes with your rotation, messes with your lineups that you typically have in a game. Um, but again, they're only down six here with three minutes to go in the third. 27-21. Yes, that is the score right now. A low scoring affair here in the KMAC. Suli down to Harris in the corner. Patience this time on yeah. offense for Centerberg. Suli, ball fake down the baseline. Nice Inside, pass. Inside, Harris scores, and that is exactly I what mean, Coach Marhefka's squad needs. I mean, Suli, Suli's come out and, and kind of shown the player that, that he is, uh, has, has been able to score, but also creating opportunities for his teammates. Vickers. Kicked right side, three for Summerlot off the front iron. No, ball on the floor, comes out, and now Centerberg yep. in transition. Hill yep. scoops, counted yeah. in one. <laughs> Finally, Bennett Hill gets on the board. So, and that, that could be huge because he has not seen the ball go through the basket tonight. So he makes a really nice play going a little crossover right to left, finishing with his left hand, now goes the free throw line. And if he's able to make this free throw, it'll be interesting to see when he shoots his next three, Travis, to yeah. see if that helps him. All so you he, have to do is see it yep, go through once. Yep, and so it'll be interesting here. So got it to a one-point game here. On the other end, that um, doesn't matter if it's on the floor or not because we're getting free yeah, throws. Getting free throws. That's a, that's a tough foul because, um, Will, that, that's a, that was a tough shot he was going to take. First foul against Blaine Ball. And you are seeing Mount Gilead, every time Centerberg's hit a shot, got an and one, hit a three, you see Mount Gilead take it right back to the hole. Yeah, yeah. but that was going to be a tough shot. I mean, yeah, that, absolutely. He, he's kind of lucky there that they called that foul. Rolls kind of reverse. Now it's Mount Gilead that can't hit a free throw here in the uh, second half. You know, if you're, if you're playing the percentages, you look, both teams shoot 56%. Um, you know, it's usually going to catch up. Non-conference K-Mac final from Fredericktown. Freddies defeat Colonel Crawford 55-38. Ooh, holy, that's, that's a big win for the Freddies. Huge RPI points out of that one. Fredericktown, they've starting to come on. Saw him against Northmore, nearly pull one off. And then since then, they've been on a roll, being Cardington, beating Centerburg. They held off East Knox, and now knocking off a team that might win a district championship in Division Four. Another turnover. Actually, it's the first against Centerburg in this second half. And in that possession, Mount Gilly went back to man-to-man -to -man defense. Euros, that's going to be Good a travel. walk. So. Tenth turnover against Mount Gilead. 55-38. Freddy's with a big victory. Not only for them, but for every team in the KMAC because that helps the opponents win percentage. Yep. In that RPI rating. Can't believe we're almost done with the regular season already, Joe. That's yeah, getting close. I mean, you're we're just four, like four weeks away. Harris, first lead of the night for for Centerberg. Just like that, the Trojans get back out in front with a minute left in the third. Well, Suli and Harris both have, have kind of made their presence known here in the third quarter. Um, so so that you can see why those two guys have been able to average double figures. But once again, Wilt takes it to the hole, gets fouled, yep. and he'll have a chance to tie or take the lead after yeah. this timeout by... Centerburg, 28-27. If you're the Indians, at least one or two here. Go into the third quarter break at least tied. Yeah, I mean that's right now the 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 issue for Centerburg is going to be this the, their foul trouble. I mean this I think is the sixth or seventh foul on them this quarter, um, and eventually I mean they got several guys with three fouls. Somebody I think somebody with four. Um, that could play a big factor in, the, in this basketball game in the fourth quarter. So Fredericktown won already in non-conference. Northmore leads by 22 after three. 
And our score here, 28-27 Centerburg as we approach the end of quarter three. Well, who, who's the who's the big kid for Fredericktown? Um, uh, it's uh, the 6'5 kid that we saw. I can't think of his name. I mean, he played really well against Northmore. Uh, Gavin Toombs. Yeah, Gavin had Toombs. Had 18, was our MVP against East Knox. Yeah. I would imagine he probably had a big night for them down there for them to be successful. But he's shown that as only a sophomore, he can be a guy that can really lead a basketball team. Well, the final game of the regular season post Northmore against Fredericktown, which That'll be could, a good one. could determine yep. if we have a share in the conference or not, maybe even an outright. That's knocked out of bounds, and it's going to stay with Centerberg. So a little bit different set here. They've Mount sure Gilead. Went out of a, a, a box set here and they put four guys right at the free throw line and just kind of crossed and, and dove uh, Vickers to the basket. Oh, almost a steal, but that's going to be a tough luck foul against Centerberg. That's going to be the third foul of the quarter and overall for Blaine Ball. So now he has three. He's one of four players with at least yeah. three fouls for Centerberg. Yep. And kind of a smart play, too, by Wilt. Was able to cut in front of him just early enough that Ball couldn't stop his momentum. But the, the free throw bug's starting to hit him now. He's one of five in the second half. Yep. I mean, they're going to... Three of eight overall. If they lose this basketball, they're going to come back and look at these opportunities they've had at the free throw line as being a big difference in this basketball game. Hits the second Indians lead again. 48 seconds left in the third, 29-28. And they're back to that 2-1-2 two, two zone with Sayers right at, right at the free throw line. Hill at the baseline, double team. Gets it away, yeah, the ball. Now to Sue Lee. Man on the floor for Mount Gilead. It's five on four, and they got Sayers to jump. No! Ball to travel. Travel. Yeah, jump stop and that lead. Yep. As we said, the, pay, the presence of Sayers inside causes problems just because of his size. And I'm surprised that he was only in there for a few seconds in that third quarter. Yeah, he's only in, been, was in there probably less than maybe a minute. He was such a big presence in that first half. But again, a big possession here for Mount Gilead in the quarter, and they're going to get the ball back to start the fourth. Vickers. Kicks it back out to Trainer. Trainer into the lane, right side. Back out the Wilt. Four seconds, three. He's got to get a shot off. Spins. Fade away at the buzzer. Almost goes, but it will not. 29 28. We got ourselves a game now, folks. Can the Indians pull off the upset? We'll find out. Fourth quarter action after the break. Morrow County Hospital, along with Ohio Health, is the official sports medicine provider of Mount Gilead High School. Available 24-7 to care for your athlete, with same-day appointment options available. They keep your athletes healthy and in the game. Morrow County Hospital and Ohio Health are proud to partner with Mount Gilead High School to provide a healthier community. Serving teams, parents, and all of Morrow County. Money time here on the OH Report. Mount Gilead 29, Centerburg 28. That big play right there. Yeah, turnover to start the quarter. And so coming out, you know, you're, if you're Centerburg, you were talking about, hey, let's get a stop, a score, and a stop. I mean, if you get a score here, you're going get to the, get the lead, and then if you get a stop, you got the ball and the lead. So Mount Gilead comes out in man-to-man -man here to start the fourth quarter. Suli works it around. And inside Bad pass, the turnover. Turn it away. Bad pass. Just needed to, to show a little bit more patience to let Suli sit in there and post up because 
even though he's not real big, he, he's, he's pretty strong. He'd be a tough matchup inside. Trainer, skip pass, got away with the walk. Summerlock yep, for three, banked it, but won't go. Yep. Rebound to the That's, Trojans. And this is this is where the Trojans, or excuse me, where uh, the Indians have been good in transition. They're solely. You're right the first time, the Trojans in transition, but what a block. Excuse me, Centerburg Trojans, I'm sorry. You're right the I first think time. I, I You're think right the I've first called time. them, yes. Yeah. I think I might have called them the Centerburg Indians a couple times tonight already, too. But just getting a little bit confused there. It's okay. Harris right to the basket. Wow. Yep. And once again, the Trojans lead. That's his sixth point of the second half. He's got 10 yep. of the 30 points. Again, Baker really working hard to post up. Nearly got that to go, but he will go to the line, and that is foul number three on Harris. I mean, great, great job there um, of Gage Baker really working hard to post up. They found him in the post, and then he went right at Harris inside. Well, also you saw Harris at the last second try to go for the block, yeah, and he, that's what the foul call came yeah, from. Yeah, when those hands come down, they're usually going to call that foul. Baker continues to but, struggle from the line yeah. in the second half. Mal Gillies really struggled from the line here in the second half. Him and Will to combine three of 11. Ooh. It's a one-point game. Now it's tied. 15 for Trainer, and we will get a knock out of bounds. It'll stay with Centerberg with 6.56 left in regulation. After everything the Trojans have gone through in that first half, they've able, been able to stick yep, around, and yep. we're tied they're, now. They're, they're hanging in. Winning ugly is just the same as winning big. <laughs> that, that it's was, a win. That, that was an ugly shot there. <laughs> yeah, kind of caught in the middle. Baker. Yeah, but here. That's a turnover. Sloppy play there by Mount Gilead. Into the lane. Wow. wow. Hills, Hills made two, two pretty unbelievable moves to the basket tonight. Uh, as we just mentioned earlier, he was able to go with his left hand and finish off balance. There he took, took contact and kind of threw a prayer in and is able to throw it in with his right hand. Now he goes to the free throw line, going for his sixth point of the ninth. Getting two, two three-point plays the untraditional way of not, you know, he, he's missed, I think, about seven threes from the line, uh, but getting two there is a and one here in the second half. I think that's good enough for your top ten plays of the week. That would, that would probably be a good one right there. And a timeout. Mount Gilead is Centerburg. It's the largest lead of the night. Three points. 33 to 30. While we have a second, let's, tie, let's thank our sponsors. Coach, Coach Marhefta talking about getting a five-second call out there at top. One, one the official to count. Tonight's game brought to you live and free thanks to our generous sponsors, Eight Sisters Bakery, located at exit 151 just off of I-71 North in Mount Gilead. Morrow County Hospital, providing great care locally so patients do not have to travel far to receive quality expert health care. Morrow County Job and Family Services, call the number in the description or visit their location in Mount Gilead to see what services are available for your family. Ohio means job Morrow County. Need a current job list? Help with your resume or practice interviewing. Morrow County, Ohio Means Jobs provides many services that can assist you. Stop in or give them a call at 419-946-8480. Once again, 419-946-8480. And Home and Kitchen Supply, your one-stop shop for kitchen and baths. Windows and doors since 1970. Thank you all for allowing us to be live and free this evening as the Mount Gilead pep band right to our right, continuing with the twos. Indians now, the team that desperately needs a hoop. So they're, they're, they're not four across at the free throw line. Last time they just, the time, when they've run this play, they've just kind of cut guys across and looking for somebody diving into the basket. And Centerberg does a really good job of just protecting the lane. Trainer. Down the baseline, skip pass. Harris with the deflection, yep. but not able to, to corral it. But it did disrupt the offense for a second for Mount Gilead. And that's going to be on the floor. 
who is and it on? It's the fourth on Blaine Ball. Yeah, it's kind of a kind of a good foul for yeah, Centerberg absolutely. because he had a clear uh, ba Baker had cleared everybody out for for him to go shoot a layup, and Baker makes a nice dive to the basket. Can't get it to go. Yep, great, great save. play by Carson Trainer though. Carson Trainer able to throw it off of a Centerberg player and keep possession of the basketball. So box set here out of bounds this time. The lacrosse screen inside. They're gonna throw it That's out top. Be picked. Picked off, and Hill goes Hill to the basket. Ooh, what great, a block. Great block. And a foul going to be against Jack Lawrence. That's his third. Hayden, take Summer, a look at this. Hayden Summerlot with a really good play there in transition. Might have two top play nominees coming out of this one. And again, this is the third foul on Centerberg this quarter. And, and we have 551 yeah. left, so... The, the foul situation continues to be a problem for the Trojans tonight. 33-30. Centerberg leads. They need a win in conference to stay alive in the race. And a foul on Sue Lee. His fourth. His fourth. And that was that slap down. But there might have been a travel before it. Maybe. You want to take a look at it again? Here you go. <laughs> well, kind of a bang-bang play there. Yep. yep. Could have gone either way. Vickers, the trainer. Vickers loses it off the <laughs> foot of Centerberg, though, and it will stay. <laughs> But every, every loose ball just kind of taking a bad bounce yeah. for Centerberg yeah. tonight. I mean, it's been one of those games where, you know, they kind of make a play and then they just can't make, make the final play. Gut check time for both squads. Vickers again into the lane. Rich yeah, Harris just swatted Harris. that. And then he's uh, going to get called for the foul. Yeah, got yeah. a little overconfident on that yeah. second swipe. Yeah. He, he just saw it got the he, elbow uh, first. Well, he, he just needs – he can't really swat down that hard. Yep. Even if you block the shot, the official's usually going to call the contact. Look so. at the first one. He got all yep. ball, but then that second well, one, yeah, watch the elbow. Gonna, yeah. Like kind of with yeah. the arm over top instead of straight up. So he has four fouls yes. now also with just about five minutes to go in the game. Baker hits the first. He leads all scores with 15. Yeah, he's had a really nice game tonight for Mount Gilead. Make it 17. And look, once again, it's a one-point game. Suli, Taylor, Ball, mm. Harris, all with four fouls for Centerberg. Hill, traveled. 14th Centerberg turnover. I'm not, I'm not really sure if that was a travel, though. I don't either. His 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 uh, pivot foot was still locked yeah, down. Yeah, his pivot foot was still locked down on the floor. But when you go on the road, a lot of times you don't get those breaks. So they got to kind of try to fight through those those situations tonight. Nice pass. Can't get it to go. Tough angle on that shot. Suley with a big big time rebound there, though. And that'll be the third on Gage Baker. Only the second, though, on Mount Gilead. And like you said earlier, five fouls against Centerberg already in this quarter. For the last 447, yep. non, yep. any non-player control foul will put Mount Gilead at the line. Harris yeah. pulls up, misses. Just can't get their layup to go. Just ran a side ball screen there. He refused it, just not able to finish. And Summerlot's fouled, and he will get free throws. That'll be the second against Bennett Hill. Thirty-six fouls have been called tonight, Joe. <laughs> well, Tie game. And I'm going to guess if we did them by team, the majority of those are going to be against Centerberg because <laughs> they they they've had five, twenty-four of those. How many? Twenty-four. Yeah, because that's it's been five five plus fouls every quarter. Hill. Can he get one to go? No. Nope. 
Mount Gilead four of four from the line, their last four shots, they lead by one. Big three in the air, short. Great box out by Centerberg that time. And a foul. No, on the line, turnover. Holy smokes. <laughs> And a full or a 30 second timeout by John Marhefka. It is a full timeout. He's going to want to have a conversation. Well, at least with one of the refs to say, What's going I, on I, here? I, I think what he's going to try to do is just settle his team down. I mean, yeah, that's, that, that's got to be something on that, on that play. I mean, you, you kind of hate to say that, but uh, he, he, he definitely got pushed. So I'm sure what Coach Marhefka is talking to him right now is, you know, hey, man, we just got to find a way to fight through it. I mean, that's. Sometimes what you have to do on the road, you gotta you gotta fight through it, and uh, they gotta be a little bit stronger with the basketball, and, and be a little bit smarter defensively. Of you're not putting your hands on people and not reaching and putting them to the free throw line. Uh, you know you're right in this basketball game that's just been a struggle for Centerburg all night. Speaking of a team that's easily fought through their away contest, Northmore up by 20 as this game's ending. So the Golden Knights eight and one in conference. If Centerburg's able to hold on. They would re remain two games off up on them, one game on Cardington and Fredericktown, who they both still face Northmore yep. coming up. That's the, that's the fun part of when you play that home and away in the league is, is you got to beat a team. If you're going to win the league, usually you got to beat a team twice. The, the, Cardington, the, other. the lone squad to do so so far against yep. Northmore. Indians with the inbounds coming up on the midway point yep. of quarter four. And he ran that box set, looked right, look, looking to run Summerlot off of that screen. They really have never gotten that yet tonight. He's going to drive in, kick it back out. Vickers nearly lost it. Oh, and he almost traveled, but he turned it over. Yep. 15th turnover on Mount Gilead. Yep. And, oh, tough break there. And that's kind, gives that's it back. kind of been the story of the night is Centerberg forces a turnover, but just unable to make the next play. And that's the third time tonight we've had turnover, turnover, back-to-back. -back. Yeah, Coach Marhefka talking to the official a little bit about there, about maybe that imbalance of the, of the foul calls and some of the travel calls that we've had tonight. Wilt into the lane, puts it up, no. Lawrence with the rebound for Centerberg. It's only oh. one turnover that people like, Joe, an apple turnover. <laughs> Never heard that one before, Travis, right. but that's a good one. It's a good dad joke for you dads <laughs> Nice out pass. There. Easy look. Nice pass by Hill. Jack Lawrence with his first points, and thank you for getting me away from that joke. 35-34. <laughs> you ever had a bad apple turnover? I don't think I've had it. I don't, I don't think I have either. layup. Wow. Uh, right back at you. Well, Wilt with a nice finish. I mean, Mount Gilead fighting like crazy right now. Wilt looking like Chamberlain on that take. <laughs> That's oh. a big three. Blaine Ball on the board. Two points, Centerberg Lee. Now we're going back That's, and forth. I mean, that's a big shot, especially if that's your first three of the night here in the fourth quarter. Wilt to Vickers. Jump stops. Back out to Summerlot. And he's bumped. And that's going to be five on ball. Ball just hit a big three, and then on the other end, fouls out. I mean, sometimes sometimes you have to make the adjustment that, you know, how officials are going to call Absolutely. the game. And right yes. now, you know, for, for Centerberg, almost every bump's been a foul, so you, you just got to be a little bit smarter. Um, but Centerberg got a two-point lead, and Mount Gilead going to the line here, see if they can tie it up. Summerlot, three of four from the line. He's done all of that in the second half. Cole Fricky at the table, waiting to check back in. First free throw, good. No one and one anymore, guys. Nope. It's all two shots, and this, you know, this, Travis, this probably is unusual for us because this is probably the first game that we've had all year that a team's gotten to the. To all the four two, quarters. All four Absolutely. quarters. This and like is. early. Yes. I mean, in this quarter, it was, what, at the five-minute mark that they were in it. We're tied again. Yeah, this is the first time I've seen all year a team. 
This is the first time I've seen this many fouls this year, too. Yeah, yeah, it's been a lot of fouls called. Suli had the back door for a moment, but instead will keep it. Double team, kicks it back out. Hill thought about that three, yeah, but he'll back it out. It, but Gets it to their playmaker, Harris. Man. Lost the handle, though, but keeps possession. Harris, Harris has slipped a couple times tonight, uh, uh, you know, when he's tried to put the ball on the floor. Under two to play. We're tied at 38. Suli getting the screen from Harris. And there's that bump foul once again. Yeah, but it's only the third foul on Mount Gilead, so it's going to be baseline out of bounds here. Let's, let's see what Centerberg sets up in. Third on Carson Trainer. Looks like they're calling it a, what they call head tap, and it's a four low set. Uh, they're just clearing it out for Harris. And that's another one. Yeah. Yep. It's getting called on both ends at least. Right. Trainer's fourth. I mean, that was just a, a one four low set. They threw it to Harris at the elbow. They, they brought Hill up top, and, and, and then Harris just went one on one. So Looks like let's see if this, they do yep. the same thing again. Whoops. Post to post screen there. Didn't set a really good screen. What a spin. But Harris made a great cut. Great Jack rebound. Jack Lawrence. Jack Lawrence. Made, that's a tremendous rebound. He's got and four points. A, a big rebound and a big finish by 90, Jack Lawrence. 90 seconds left. No foul offensive board, though. Spin. Puts it up. Counted and one. Mount Gillian with a chance to get the lead back. And there's our guy that right now is uh, Gage Baker with a shot fake and a step through move to draw contact and finish. Jack Lawrence's fourth foul. 40 to 40. I've got to say that first half was a bit ugly, but this second half's been fun, Joe. Yeah, they both teams really competing hard and Mount Gilly just fighting like crazy. Missed the front, well, not oh, the front end, offensive but an offensive rebound. board. I think that's the second time on a free throw that they've gotten an offensive rebound, and, and uh, Carson Trainer was the guy that grabbed that that rebound. Here's the end one again. Just look at the muscle. I mean, just a just a nice, simple step through move. 70, 80 seconds remaining in this one. 40, 40. Let's go back to our comments section. Laura Brown, I will give you a free plug. How about a free plug for the End Zone Bar and Grill? Their fifth anniversary celebration happening February 16th in honor of Joe Long. The owner of the End Zone tragically passed away in November. And also, Laura, if you want to get a hold of us about sponsoring some Mount Gilead games, please message the OH report. Maybe we'll get on some games together, but yes. Free plug for you folks at the end zone. Hopefully you guys have it on at the end zone as well. Phyllis Heimberger. Hello. Hello to Donald Smith. Nicole Sayers. Put the big man back in. I would. Zach Howard rooting for the Indians. Donald Smith. Hello. Bethany Smith as well. So a minute 20, baseline out of bounds. Box set, they just, just get the ball in bas get the ball in bounds to Summerlot at the top. It's a little side ball screen action Ooh. here. Dangerous pass. Vickers nearly walked, but gets it back to Wilt. He'll back it out with 108 left. Fi hold it for the final shot or a good look, Joe? Well, I mean, I think you got to run offense here, and if you get a good shot, you, you're going to take it. I, I mean, I've... I mean, they're three I, I'm, and ten. I'm, I'm going to say if it if it gets to if it gets to 30 seconds, uh, you're you're probably going to look to hold it till the last shot of the game. Looks like they might be doing so. Yeah. Now Mount Gilead does have a timeout, a couple timeouts remaining as well. So yeah. maybe just running and, clock, setting it up with about 10 seconds and, left. You know, and both teams are going to be shooting two free throws on a foul. So trainer to Vickers. Over to Summerlot. We're down to 30 seconds left. Will we see our first buzzer beater to end a game this year, Joe? Might be we'll coming down out. to that. We'll see. Wilt into the lane. Ooh. Almost turned it over. Vickers, he goes in. And a timeout, Mount Gilead. Wow. Let's uh. take a look at this because he had a clean lane to the bucket right there. 
Uh, the ball got deflected. Got deflected, got so. deflected at the end, though. But, yep. 17.3 yeah. seconds remaining. Joe, you have 598 wins, so draw me up a play here. Who comes in for Mount Gilead? Well, what do they run? You're, you're really not going to draw. I mean, for me, we don't draw anything up special. I mean, you got different options with what you run out of your baseline out-of-bounds play. So what you may do is you may show something completely different than you've shown so far. Um, and in most of these situations, Mount Gilead's shown either a box set um, or they've shown four guys across the free throw line. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if they show any kind of different look here. Um, but usually in most cases in, in a situation like this, this is something that we practice late in the basketball game. Get it to Gage Baker inside? I would say Gage Baker's got to be a, big, a major option here because, um, you know, he's got, what, 19? Well, yeah, he's got 19 points tonight. I mean, the big thing you want to tell your kids if you're a Mount Gillick, how to let's take something aggressive to the basket because, you know, we're going to get to the free throw line with how the game's being called tonight. They took 63 seconds off that clock. That's pretty impressive yep. against the Centerberg team that can and get and a steal and, especially, and a run out. And especially with the team that turned it over Absolutely. like they did in the first half. They will inbound So, again, here, they're in this box set here again. 17.3 left. Mount Gilead looking for its signature win this season. Baker just gives the screen. Just they get it out the will. Yeah, just a simple cross screen to get it in. Now let's see what they run. 10 seconds. Will nearly lost it. Nearly lost it again. Six seconds. Five, four, three. Baker has to get a shot off. One at the horn. No, we're going to go to overtime. End of regulation. I mean, great, great defensive possession there by Centerburg. They gave them nothing easy to look at and really had, had Mount Gilead put the ball in somebody's hands that probably was not intended to take that last uh, that last shot. So we got free basketball coming up. We'll take a break yep. and when we come back, Overtime for the first time this season for at least us on the OH Report. Morrow County Hospital, along with Ohio Health, is the official sports medicine provider of Mount Gilead High School. Available 24-7 to care for your athlete, with same-day appointment options available. They keep your athletes healthy and in the game. Morrow County Hospital and Ohio Health are proud to partner with Mount Gilead High School to provide a healthier community. Serving teams, parents, and all of Morrow County. Well, as we start the overtime, both teams are going to be shooting two free throws on any foul. So right, right now you're telling your, your players, hey, let's be aggressive at taking the ball to the basket. Let's not just settle for jump shots unless we're wide open. Let's look to get something going to the hoop. 40 to 40 is the score. They go right inside of Jack Lawrence and a great rebound there. Reverse won't go. That, Lawrence and Lawrence again, again and gets a foul. A foul. Two offensive boards. I mean, Jack Lawrence and Ryder Scott, you could see Coach Marhafka coming out and going, hey, we're going inside right away here because we're either going to get a basket or we're going to get to the free throw line. That is Carson Trainer's fifth foul. He fouls out with no points, but who's coming in now? Probably for the final 341 at least, Mitchell Sayers. Yep. He changed that game in the first half. Yep. We'll see if they can do it again here in the second half. Yep. First free throw missed. I mean, but a great effort there uh, by Lawrence to get to the offensive glass. Makes one of two. They're up by one. 41-40. 
3.30 left in OT. Into the lane, puts it up, no. Sayers got a hand on it, ball's oh. on the ground. Jack Taken Lawrence. out by Lawrence. Jack Lawrence fouled. with another big rebound there. He'll go back to the line. I mean, good, good, good job there by Centerberg of just playing straight up. Wilt forced a tough shot. We talked about earlier, mm -hmm. there was one that they called a foul, but, but Lawrence with a big defensive rebound and now gets a chance, and he's going to get to shoot another one here. No, the official, that was wrong. That was wrong. Explain this, Joe. Well, Lawrence already had the ball to shoot the free throw. He should have shot it. And Sayers stepped in, and, and if he would have missed, he would have got a second shot, but the official stopped the play. That should not have happened. Doesn't make a difference now because uh, Lawrence goes to the free throw line and makes the first, but, but that was an official error there. We actually had that happen in a big game a few years ago between Western Reserve Lawrence. and and Monroeville. Monroeville had a chance to tie it late, but had that happen, the referee called it. So Jack Lawrence has been big here in the fourth quarter and the start of the overtime. Three-point lead. An offensive rebound and a defensive rebound and going to the line and made three of four. Gage, Baker. Get, Baker, nice pass. Sayers gets the bucket to go. His third point, first field goal of the evening. It's 43 Well, Baker 42. forced the double team and, and they rotated. And uh, he made a nice pass to Sayers for the finish. Harris into the lane. Fouled. We'll get two free throws. Big win. Shelby knocking off Mansfield Sr. Also at, another D2. At Mansfield Sr. too. Yeah, and another D2 score. Uh, Bellevue knocked off Willard. Those are... Yep. Yeah, that'll, Those are four of the top five teams in that district. That'll, that'll change the RPI a little bit this, you know, while starting tonight once those scores are reported. And all that helps out Lexington. Yep. So Harris goes to the line. He misses the first, gets a chance here to make the second. And misses Missed the them second. Both. But, but, you know, coming into the game, Travis, we said both teams only are shooting 56% from the free throw, free throw line for the year. So, um, both, both teams have not been able to take a big advantage at the free throw line tonight. Vickers spins in the lane. Ball fakes, puts it up off the glass. No. Good job by Harris not to foul. Yeah, it's a great defensive effort there. Behind the back to wow, Lawrence. Wow, that is a great pass. An unbelievable pass. 45-42. And there, there's our guy, Lawrence. To, to finish it at the rim, Jack Lawrence, big. But back at you, Cam Vickers. Yep. Two minutes left in OT, one point Centerberg lead. Ryder Scott cut off, loses the Ball handle, but finds over. Harris. He then picked Suley. it up again. Ball yeah. deflected, stolen away. Mount Gilly with the chance to take the lead. Baker. No call, Vickers. put back, Mount Gilead leads. Vickers, eight points in the second half in OT, they lead by one. And, and it's stolen steal. away again. Out the Wilt, 117 left, Mount Gilead by one. Ball deflected, deflected and stolen away. Hill. 65 seconds left. Nearly stolen. Ball's on the ground. Who's it go to? Mount Gilead ball. Yep. Another turnover. I mean, two been, possessions, they, two turnovers for well, Centerberg. I think it's three, three possessions yeah. here, three turnovers in a row. That's... That's hurt. Wilt's hurt, by the way. Limping a little bit after that play. Cole Fricky will go in and replace him. Yeah, he's hobbling. I, but what effort by him to force the turnover. Yep. And Centerberg will have to talk it over. Centerberg led by three in the overtime, but a 4-0 run 
by Vickers himself gives Mount Gilead a one-point lead in possession. How long do you go before fouling? Or at all? Well, you know, I, I'm i going to say you, you probably go to about the 30-second mark, and then you're going to look to foul. So probably Coach Marhafka, maybe one of his assistants, has the stats as to who's the worst free throw shooter on Mount Gilead. So I, I'm going to say that you're going to really try to play good defense here for you know the next 15, 20 seconds to see if you can create a turnover. And then if it gets under 30, you're probably going to have to get in a situation that you're going to have to foul one of their players. Shout out to Randy Lister watching. Also Kevin McMahon watching from West Palm Beach, Florida. You think it's a little bit uh, warmer down there? than it is up here. Well, it hasn't been that bad as far as cold here. The last here. couple days, it's been beautiful. I, I, I would, Not the rain, but well, the temperature. Well, I would say in Florida, he's probably seen the sun a lot more than we have. Yeah, we've seen it, what, three days in the, this yeah. month? Yeah, it hasn't. The last few days, it hasn't been much at all. Vickers in the corner. Skips it over to Baker with 43 seconds left. Baker's going to try the drive, jump stop, kick it back out to Summerlot. 38 seconds left. Baker again. Skip pass, drive and kick. Over to Fricky. Fricky down the baseline. Gets it back out. You're going to have to probably look to foul here soon. 20 seconds. Skip pass. Saved by oh. Fricky, the quarterback with a save. Gets it back to him. Over. You're going to have to foul now. Now to Summerlaw with 12. And he is fouled. At the end of regulation, Mount Gilead held it for 80 seconds. Yep. For this one, they've held it for a good 50 seconds and the chance to make this a full three possession lead with 11 seconds left. Yep. And we'll get a Centerburg timeout. I mean, a, an excellent job there of, I mean, it wasn't the prettiest, Travis. No, but it worked. But, but it worked. I mean, they had a couple times where they were in some double teams. He almost threw it out of bounds on the side. But Great save by Cole uh, Fricky there, yeah. They, they, they made, they're making enough plays here to give themselves a chance to win this basketball game. There is at one point in the possession where Fricky had it wide open for the layup, but he threw yeah. it back out. Really smart move, I believe, by him. Yeah. Well, I don't know if it was a wide open layup. I mean, if he had a good look, but but right now you're, you're kind of playing the clock, and the hope is – you're going to be able to go to the free throw line and make free throws. It'll be Summerlot going to the line. He is five of six tonight. All of that in the fourth, the second half in overtime. A home and kitchen supply timeout here in OT. Now, if you're Centerberg, well, you got to think Harris or Suli, maybe a pass to Reynolds, depending on what the score is here. Yeah, yeah. And I, I guess they have the, options. The interesting part here will will they use, you know, what, whether it's make or miss, will they use a timeout to set up a play, or do they just go with with the clock? First free throw, got yeah. it. Two point lead. Nine points for Hayden Summerlock. Big one here. Yep. Nope. No. But Offensive gonna... rebound, Vickers. And a jump ball. It will stay with Mount Gilead with 10.4 left. Another offensive rebound yeah, off a missed free throw. I, I think that's the third one we've had tonight for Mount Gilead. And they have all been huge um, as they will call yeah. a timeout. Well, interesting thing is the initially the official had his fist closed. I know. Which means it's a foul. <laughs> and then he changes it to a jump ball. So right um, call? I mean I think it was a jump ball, yeah, but that's what I mean, but yeah. actually, actually if you're if you're if you're Centerberg, you would have probably said go ahead and call the foul because you're probably gonna have to foul here anyways. Um, but it does give you a chance right now that you can you know, de deny the inbounds pass and maybe create a, a turnover here on the baseline out of bounds play. I'm looking up at the scoreboard, Joe, and I think this is the first time ever I've seen a team with four fouls by everybody's number. <laughs> that is a Centerberg has four yeah. fouls on five Hill, guys. <laughs> Suley, Taylor, 
Harris and Lawrence. Well, well you're, you're definitely correct that this is the most fouls that we've seen in the game all year. Oh, and Scott, too. So, Centerberg got to do, you know, they, they just got to really try to deny this pass. They need a steal. See if they can get a deflection and a steal. And if you're Mount Gilead, the big thing is, hey, we just got to get the ball inbounds right now. And if you're a guy that catches it, you better be prepared that they're going to foul you. Gets it in to the big man. And they're just going to hack at him. And if it's oh. on Sue Lee, that's his fifth. It is. Wait. Isaiah Sue Lee fouls out with five points. And yeah. that's tough because he's a ball handler. Yeah. But you had no other choice. Yeah. I mean, you had to foul right away, immediately. Mitchell Sayers, one of two tonight. And even if he goes one of two, it's a full three-point lead. You get 30 seconds keeps... here to get a sub in, so. And it acts as a free timeout for Mount Gilead as well. Yeah. Yeah. Who uh, Sully's not they're not have they have they told him that he's out of the game yet or not? Well the clock started. Now they're starting. Well, Coach Marhefka playing it really smart because it's the, the responsibility of the official to come and tell tell the player that he's yeah. got five and tell you he's got five and the official did not do that so it also, so, it's so like he, icing he, the kicker he, too he, he took that time to try to you know try to freeze the shooter a little bit but the big thing right now two free throws I mean he needs he needs to go one of two And now, and now he's even more time, out. time yeah. Yeah. a full timeout. Yeah. Yeah. 8.2 seconds left in overtime. Well, Sayers, it's important he makes one of these two. Yes. And for So at the worst for, for, for Mount Gilead, we have a double overtime. Yeah. And for Centerberg, you know, the big thing is. If he misses the first, you got to be prepared to make sure you box out on the second one. I mean, that that's has hurt them. Yeah, that's paramount right now because uh, that that has hurt them. Uh, I, I mean, for me as a coach, that was kind of one of the cardinal sins of of basketball was if we gave up offensive rebounds on on uh, on a missed free throw. Mitchell Sayers, our player spotlight. Who knew it was going to come down to him tonight? Just that's how it works out sometimes for yep. us. What a game so far, though, Joe. First half, 17-11 at the break. But since then, things have gotten exciting. Yeah, I mean, Gage Baker's been outstanding for Mount Gilead tonight. And uh, right now, Tevin Harris has got to do a good job of, of making sure on the second free throw that he boxes him out. So... Sayers with a with a chance here to, to really put this game away if he's able to make both. Three-point lead. Yep. The big one now. Yep. And this is where he makes this. You just back off. Well, if he makes this, you if you're if you're Centerberg, you got to go to the basket and go fast. I mean, you got to go fast here. Missed In it. In and out. Lawrence with the rebound. Five seconds. Four. Hill with three seconds, two, pulls up for the tie. No, Mount Gilead's done it. They've knocked off Centerberg. The Indians pull off the 48-45 victory. A signature victory for head coach Nathan Davis and his squad. We'll yeah, I mean, it's, that's a big win. When you've lost Absolutely. eight games in a row, uh, you know, sometimes you just wonder how much fight your kids have in them. And the one thing tonight that Mount Gilead showed is they had tremendous fight. A tough loss, tough loss for the Centerberg Trojans. Um, you know, just did not shoot them very well tonight. You know, especially Bennett Hill. Uh, he just was not able to make a three all night. And uh, 
Mount Gilead hung around enough, they were able to pull it out. 48-45 the final in overtime. We'll take a break. When we come back, our post-game show as well as our Morrow County, County Hospital MVP. Hi, I'm Joe Baylog, and you're not. Hall of Fame coach turned future Hall of Fame host. Now he's on TV hosting his own. Highlighting our team in the Joe Show Zone. Hall of Fame coach, now a host. Sharing our stories from coast to coast. From the court to the screen, he's the best. Jules like to see Liz on in the Joe Show Quest. Because this is my show. And it's an all new me in the new year. Deal with it. Guarantee nobody else gets you closer to the action than our exclusive coverage. So give me a call, Brian Skaronsky, and let's make you a part of the game. Morrill County Hospital, along with Ohio Health, is the official sports medicine provider of Mount Gilead High School. Available 24-7 to care for your athlete, with same-day appointment options available. They keep your athletes healthy and in the game. Morrill County Hospital and Ohio Health are proud to partner with Mount Gilead High School to provide a healthier community. Serving teams, parents, and all of Morrill County. Join me, Travis Big League Berardi, every other Wednesday for my Country Roads rankings, the top five girls and boys small school basketball squads right here in the area. Exclusively on The Joe Show. Back now with our Morrow County Hospital MVP, Gage Baker from the victorious Mount Gilead Indians. A game high, 19 points, 9 of 16 from the free throw line as the Indians get a signature victory in overtime, 48-45. First of all, congratulations, Gage. Thank you. Just what was going through your mind as this game progressed? Um, really, we got the early lead, and I just knew we needed to um, keep – up, it, up the score, I guess. I mean, I didn't really have much thoughts to it. I just kept trying to uh, back down my opponent and just try to get to the foul line. Um, second half, well, first half too, but second half, he came up with some big rebounds, a couple putbacks for and ones. Just uh, what got, got into you in that second half? Because it seemed like you took the game over for your team. I just, I felt, was feeling confident making those layups, and I just, Again, decided to back down my opponent and just try to get to the line any way possible. Knew I could uh, stronger than the opponent, so that's what I chose to do. Uh, you know, this is a big win for you guys. You were on an eight-game losing streak yeah. since going two and three and two to start. You lost at Centerburg by 22 points. But what does a win like this do for you guys? Momentum-wise, it's a signature victory for your head coach, Nathan Davis. Just what can this do for you guys moving forward? I mean, really this boosts our confidence like crazy. Like coming into this, we lost some tough battles, like close games, and this just set us over. Like so happy, can't even explain it. Well, before I let you go celebrate this huge win, if you wanna look into the camera, give anybody a shout out, go for it. Uh, I'd like to shout out just the MG crowd and the, uh, my teammates and then my parents, my mom and my dad. Uh, yeah. There you have it, tonight's MVP. Gage Baker, a game-high 19 points. Mount Gilead upsets Centerburg. Congratulations. Thank you.
Tonight's overtime thriller in the KMAC brought to you live and free on the OH Report thanks to our generous sponsors. Eight Sisters Bakery, located at exit 151, just off of I-71 North in Mount Gilead. Morrow County Hospital, providing great care locally so patients do not have to go far to receive quality expert health care. Morrow County Job and Family Services, call the number in the description or visit their location in Mount Gilead to see what services are available for your family. Ohio means jobs, Morrow County. Need a current job list? Help with your resume or practice interviewing? Morrow County, Ohio means jobs provides many services that can assist you. Stop in or give them a call at 419-946-8480. Once again, 419-946-8480. And Home and Kitchen Supply, your one-stop shop for kitchen and baths, windows and doors since 1970. Thank you all for allowing us to be live and free this evening as we welcome you inside the Morrow County Job and Family Services post-game show. What a game, Joe. Mount Gilead with a huge, huge victory over Centerburg here tonight to get off the schneid out of an eight-game losing streak. Yeah, I mean, uh, you got to give Coach Davis a lot of credit, um, especially at this time of the year. You know, you're in this grind in January. You've lost eight games in a row. Um, you're wondering how your team's going to respond after, you know, a couple tough defeats here where you haven't played real well. Uh, but, man, they just fought and fought tonight. And um, as, we, as we take a look, you know, our MVP, he played – he was outstanding tonight. He kind of led the charge, and um, Mount Gilly was able to finish it off. Uh, taking a look at the final stats – and Joe, I want to I want you to look at the second to last stat on the right for the Trojans. 30 fouls. Yeah. Mount Gilead went 23 of 39 from the free throw line. On the other end, 16 fouls, only 7 of 14 from the line. That's, that's a that's, huge that, difference. That, that, that's significant. And uh, um, you know, as a, as a coach, <laughs> you're you're probably going to make have some questions after you watch the film a little bit, but. Uh, you know, as you say, when you go on the road, you, you got to kind of fight through some things. And, you know, Setterberg put themselves in a situation where they could, you know, had a chance to win the game. They just just were not able to to finish it off. But, a, again, I think you give a lot of credit to, to Mount Gilead. Absolutely. Um, just with how hard they play. And that's not saying that Setterberg didn't play hard, but, uh, you know, some tough luck with the, with the fouls. But also sometimes when you go on the road, you got to make a little bit of an adjustment that you know you can't reach and bump maybe as much because officials are calling it that way but uh a good win good win uh for the the indians you know as they approach the stretch run of the season here yeah it's it's the signature win for head coach nathan davis and company before we get out of here let's go over some individual statistics for the night first for centerberg they were led by trevin harris's game team high 10 points jack lawrence with nine great effort by him in the second half joe yep Owen yeah, Taylor especially, with eight. Especially yeah. late in the game. Oh, yeah. He kept them in it, had them in a th with a three-point lead early on in overtime, but they just couldn't hold on. Owen Taylor with eight. Bennett Hill with six. Isaiah Suli with five. Ryder Scott with four. Blaine Ball with three as four. Mount Gilead. Game high, 19 points. What an effort tonight by our MVP, Gage Baker. Nine points from Hayden Summerlot. Eight points apiece from Jake Wilt and Cam Vickers and four points from Mitchell Sayers, including a big free throw right at the end to force the three-pointer instead of a, a you know a layup yep. attempt at the buzzer. And, and, you know, he, he, we, 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 uh, 
he made a big difference in the game when he especially came in, the first in, in the first half. That when they went to that two two uh, kind of a untraditional two two one two, where they had him right at the free throw line and he was just playing that triangle, and then they played a one three one and his size was just a factor that that Setterberg could not get the basketball inside. Um, so even though he did not play you know a lot of minutes in the second half, the minutes that he played in this game were significant minutes for the Mount Gilead Indians. Score by quarter. 12-8 Mount Gilead in the first and your favorite quarter of the night, Joe. 5-3 <laughs> Mount Gilead in the second. They led 17-11 after one half of play. Centerberg started playing Centerberg basketball in the third quarter. 17-12 in the third. They cut it to 29-28. Then 12-11 and tie it at 40. But in overtime, a, an 8-2 finish by Mount Gilead in overtime as they win it 48-45. Next up for Centerberg, they head to North Union on the third, actually. That'd be Saturday, that'd be next Saturday. They play before that. It updated on me recently, but Mount Gilead does take on Ridgemont on the 31st. Centerberg plays on the 31st as well. Any final words, Joe, before we get out of here? No, I mean, this is, you know, this is what, what's special about high school basketball in Ohio is, you know, you have a team that's really been struggling. You have another team that's kind of, kind of in the middle of that race that maybe has a chance of some things happen. Um, but the, the, the neat thing is for Mount Gilead is, you know, these these kids at this time of the year after losing eight in a row, you might say, hey, we're going to pack it in. They surely are not doing that. Um, so uh, Coach Davis has got to be really pleased with how his team's responded. And now their hope is that they can maybe put a little run together here in the last part of the season and maybe make some noise as they get to the tournament. All right, that'll do it for us for this week's coverage of high school sports on the OH Report. We'll take tomorrow off watching football, and then we'll be back at it with the podcast on Monday. And Joe and I will be at Northmore getting some footage for the Joe Show. That'll come on Wednesday night. But let's get out of here. I want to thank everybody that helped make things possible tonight. Brandon Powell is always doing a good job on the camera work. Joe Baylog, as always, my color commentator. And our sponsors for the evening, Eight Sisters Bakery, our scoreboard sponsor. Morrow County Hospital, our MVP sponsor. Morrow County Job and Family Services, our pregame halftime postgame sponsor. Ohio Means Jobs, Morrow County, our instant replay sponsor. Home and Kitchen Supply, our timeout sponsor. And Morrow County Hospital as well, our commercial sponsors. I want to thank Jack Bolt. And the fine folks here, the Athletic Department of Mount Gilead, for allowing us to be here. And want to thank the OHSA and Tim Street, Doug Youth, for allowing us to live stream these games to you free of charge. Mount Gilead gets the big win tonight, 48-45 in overtime over Centerbird. For Joe Baylog, I'm Travis Berardi saying so long for Mount Gilead.